Hello and welcome back to Particular Pixels. I'm Shaoling and this is Steam World Dig 2. For those of you who never played the original, Steam World Dig was a Metroidvania style mining platformer where you play as a steam bot by the name of Rusty who receives a deed from his uncle to a small mining town and you end up helping the town do a number of things as well as mining obviously. In the sequel you play as Dorothy, a steam bot who you actually meet in the original game who is now searching for Rusty who for some reason has gone missing. You arrive at the small mining town asking about Rusty's disappearance only to find out that there are some strange earthquakes going on and you decide to investigate since it may have some connection to your missing friend. Now the first thing I want to say is that the graphics in the sequel have been improved over the original. I suppose it's been a number of years so this should come as no surprise. But Steam World Dig 2 also feels a lot better to control than the original. Now that's not to say that the original was bad but the sequel feels very very fluid which is great. The game still remains a metroidvania style mining platformer however so outside of the game engine improvements and a few new mechanics it's basically another Steam World Dig game so if you enjoyed Steam World Dig thoroughly you will enjoy this thoroughly as well. In fact this is better than the original so there's that. As with the original, in your quest to find out what happened to Rusty, you'll get to explore a vast number of underground networks of mines located in different biomes and with different hazards and enemies within them. As with the previous game, you also start off with a weak axe, a lamp that doesn't last very long and a backpack that can't hold very much. But as you can imagine, you progress through the game by selling your minerals and you'll be able to upgrade all of your equipment. You'll find special locations throughout the game as you progress that will unlock new equipment for you to use and by the end of the game you're going to have jackhammers, jetpacks, grappling hooks, water pressure guns and so on and so forth. So a whole bunch of new stuff. On top of farming for minerals you'll also find a number of secret places where you can collect cogs and artifacts as well as doorways that lead to special areas that present unique challenges and puzzles that will reward you with cogs and artifacts. The cogs and artifacts are connected to the perk system for each piece of equipment you have. Some perks are unlocked via upgrading equipment and others are acquired from blueprints and some from leveling up. Each of these perks that you get require a certain amount of cogs to be activated anywhere from 1 all the way through to 5. Cogs can be switched out on the fly when you're in town so there is no cost involved so you get to try different builds and see what the different perks do which I thought was pretty cool. The artifacts you collect are handed into one of the NPCs in town and at various milestones he'll reward you with various blueprints that add new perks to the ones that you already have. So the game encourages exploration of course, doors that you found all the secrets in are marked with a tick and those you have not are not marked with a tick. Certain locations can only be accessed once you unlock certain pieces of equipment like the grappling hook or the jetpack and like any metroidvania type of games you're going to go back to areas you've been to before since you'll be able to explore areas you weren't able to explore before. There are four biomes in the game although not massive but they are large enough to keep you exploring and offer enough mineral deposits to fill your pockets so that you can buy most of the upgrades that you want. The game is not procedural in any way and everything that you've mined or smashed remains that way. However the enemies do respawn when re-entering areas that you've exited once going to town. Returning to town is something that you'll be doing frequently, not only to sell your resources but to replenish your health, refill your lamp and restock your ammo. Dying in the mines results basically in you losing some of the resources you collected, quite a lot actually. So it's not ideal, since the resources don't respawn in the mines once you've mined it, it is gone. The pressure gun is refilled with water in the mines as well so you can't do that without having to return to town. Killed enemies can drop small refills to certain things like your light, your water or your health depending on the type of enemy that you kill but that's no replacement to returning to town since that maxes everything out too full. There is also a fast transport system in the game so as you progress further you'll unlock new travel points or the pipe transport system I think it was called that are scattered throughout each of the caves in each of the biomes which will allow you to jet around the map rather quickly when you do need to do so. Early game exploration does take quite a while since you are frequently having to go back to town for all the reasons I mentioned above and you can't carry very much but at some point you are going to unlock the grappling hook which will offer you more freedom in moving around and eventually you'll get a jetpack as well that will pretty much allow you to fly around indefinitely. There however aren't a large amount of enemies in the game unfortunately, maybe two, one or two types of enemies per biome and they are pretty easy to deal with. I think I would have liked to have seen a little bit more enemy variety in the game and with different kinds of behavior. Killing enemies and completing quests are the two ways of getting XP to level up, leveling up unlocks new upgrades and perks. 
I reached level 15 by the time I finished the game. That took me around 10 hours. After finishing the game, I did reload my save and explore the game a little more for a couple more hours. And at the time of making this video, I believe I found about 84% of the secrets in the game. However, the game doesn't have a new game plus per se, so if you do want to keep exploring after you finish the story, you will have to reload the save game just before the final encounter. There are also only two difficulties in the game, so once you've finished it on normal, which really is not particularly difficult, there isn't much incentive to play the game again. It was, however, actually a very enjoyable experience after getting familiar with the controls, the game systems. I found myself pretty addicted to it. I'd load it up whenever I had a chance to play some more. The story was okay, nothing particularly original or exciting, and somewhat predictable as well, if I have to be honest, but it did enough to push me forward. The gameplay, artwork, and animation was definitely the star of the show here. As I mentioned earlier, it's a big improvement of the original with regards to clarity and feeling of fluidity, which makes a big difference in a game like this. I used the gamepad to play the game since it was recommended, but the mouse and keyboard works fine as well. The controls were also very responsive, and I never felt that if I died for any reason it was a fault of the controls, it was usually me taking too many risks or getting a little bit too brave. The only real gripe that I had with the game was the music, although it wasn't bad, I felt that it outstayed its welcome due to the very limited amount of tracks, which is the same issue I had with the original. Hearing the same tomb loop over and over and over while you explore a particular biome got repetitive pretty quickly because you do spend a fair amount of time mining in any particular biome because you do want to get all of those resources. So I think that if there had been a few more tracks in each area, it would have been a welcome addition. The game definitely is more about exploring, mining and finding secrets than it is about combat, much like the first game. I never came across any bugs or performance issues when I did play the game and I never had any crashes of any time during my time with the game which is great, it was very very stable. However when I first loaded up the game I disabled VSync since I used G-Sync and I found that the game suffered from tearing even with fast sync enabled in Nvidia settings. So after checking my FPS and seeing that it was in fact above my monitor's refresh rate, I kept it at 142 in Nvidia Spectre but I still had tearing so in the end I did have to turn VSync on. All in all though I've had a great time with SteamWorld Dig 2 and I'd highly recommend it to anybody who enjoyed the original game as well as those of you who enjoyed Metroidvania style platform games out there. You are not going to find a hardcore challenge here but I think despite that the game is worth picking up it's a very very enjoyable experience um, and you probably won't regret it. So for those of you who do want to check it out, I'm going to leave a link in the description box below to the Steam page. And as usual, if you have any questions or comments, you can let me know in the comment section below. I've been Xiaoling. Thanks for watching. Until next time.